welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Piles brought to you by Mommy Income. I am Kristen Ostrander. And I am Amy Fearman. And we are coming to you this week with some breaking news from inside of Mommy Income. And that is that I, Amy Fearman, am going to be retiring from Amazon. We're gonna, not going to beat around the bush on this. We're going to come out and just say that's what's happening. Um, so this has been something that has been just not a quick thing. This has nothing to do with the coronavirus that has gra grasped our world right now. This has to do with something that's been going on for quite a while for me. Um, and honestly, it, it got to the point where my Amazon business turned into a job. It turned into a J-O-B, which I always said in my businesses, I didn't want. If my business ever got to be a J-O-B, I didn't want to be there anymore. I want something that lit my fire. And I, I was feeling stuck, I guess is the best word. And, and Kristen got to experience me going through this stuck thing for way longer than I probably should have gone through it. For sure. I think, you know what, the, the, the greatest thing about working together and doing all this is being able to recognize when things are not going so well. And so the, one of the things we want to tell you right away is that this is not a divorce. This is not a breakup. There's no bad blood. Amy and I are the best of friends. And the reason why we're bringing this announcement to you is because we're the best of friends and we want to make sure we're supporting each other in what is best for us. And what Amy has come to the conclusion of is that, Amy, that Amazon is no longer what's best for her. And I'm actually really excited about that because I get to see the excitement come back to her face when she talks about something new. So she's going to share some of that. I'm going to interject some of that. We're, you're still going to have the piece of this, but I want you guys to understand first and foremost that this is not something like, oh my gosh, like the world is breaking and everyone's breaking up and it's, it's not at all like that. So one of the things that, one of the light bulb moments for me in this process, which went on for way longer than it should have, was the time when Kristen said, okay, what is it that you don't want to do in your business, you know, write them in a list, give it to me and we'll talk about this. And so I sat down and I thought about it. And I wrote a list and she responded to me and said, you wrote down everything in your business that you don't want to do anymore. And she like, it was everything. It was like 99% of the things in my business that I didn't want to do. And at that point I was like, it's just a funk. And so I went searching for that thing that was going to bring back the, the joy, the excitement, the light that, that, that used to be there that wasn't anymore. And I felt like I was letting everyone else down. I had this great business, but I wasn't enjoying it. And that was a really interesting realization for me. And I, I got, it was this light bulb moment that I had that went, aha. And th this light bulb moment went through many months of me going back and forth and saying, but I can do this. I should keep doing it because I can do it. You know, no, I want to stop you right there because that's something that we talked about that was that we've said over and over to each other, not only in mommy income, but in Amazon and every other thing, just because you can doesn't mean that you should. And here's the thing, whether that's hiring someone else to do it or really realizing that life is too short. And just because you are able to do something and just because you're profitable doesn't mean you like it. So there's a lot of people running profitable businesses that they absolutely hate. How about your, your nine to five? There's a lot of people listening right now that have a nine to five that brings them a paycheck, but brings them nothing but a dead soul. They hate going there every day. They hate driving that car, getting there, working for somebody and coming home in their job just because it makes you money. And what we're here to say and the message of all of this is you have permission to make a change and you don't have to stay in something that isn't serving you. And that is kind of what I've seen in Amy over these past months of just being like, just because you're making money, because I could hear her saying that all the time. Like, look, I'm, I'm profitable and I'm doing all these things and things are working. And I'm like, but you hate it. Why are you still doing this? And so it took a while to kind of get to that point. It took a while because I kept seeing this as quitting. Okay. Like I was looking at this as I'm giving up. I'm, I, I'm giving up. I'm quitting. And in reality, that's not what I'm doing. And so it was not until I was at a conference at the end of 2019, sitting in a flash mastermind with a couple of other women. And I was telling them how I was feeling. This, 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 I'm stuck. This isn't feeling right. And the woman next to me looks at me and she goes, you need to set a retirement date. And this was the light bulb moment because I was looking at it as I'm giving up, I'm quitting. When in reality, I'm not, I'm just moving on to a different season of my life. And that was 
a release for me to realize, okay, this isn't that, this is a retirement. So at that point, I said, you should have sent this message to your friend, Tom Brady. (laughs) It's time for him to retire. Why is he moving to a different team? (laughs) And not a great team at that. Besides the point, yes, he needs to get the message. Anyway, like this, yeah, she had to throw my team under the bus. Anyway, (laughs) saying, you know, it's relatable in the situation, right? Like taking too long to retire. Hello, Tom Brady. Let's just, you know, call it a day, Tom. Uh, It's going to be all right. (laughs) Yeah, it, it was this, this, I'm no longer quitting. I can set a retirement date. And I know that in uh, Mama Income, we've talked about setting your retirement date from your nine to five to move into a full-time Amazon. I realized I could set a retirement date for Amazon and move into what comes next without feeling bad about walking away. Now, yes, I'm retiring, but retiring wasn't just like pick a date and that's all you have to do, all right? Le- putting a business... And walking away from it is not as simple as, whoop, it's done. There's a lot of steps you have to take. It's taken me about five months to get all the parts and pieces in place. But it all started with, what do I need to do to make this thing not be a functional business anymore? And walking through all of that with my CPA and all of that, it's all part of the process. Yeah, and we'll get to that in a bit because there's definitely a plan and a process for an exit strategy, but let's not gloss over the quitting versus changing um, and quitting versus retirement or change or transition or whatever it is you want to call it. Um, there's a process that there's fundamental differences between quitting and making a change. And one, you know, some of these are quitting is an attitude. Quitting is I'm tired. Everything's hard. I can't do this. I'm mad. I'm upset. Like I'm throwing in the towel. Literally this happened the other night when my kids and I were playing cards, we had this family game and we got through like 12 rounds. If y'all never played wizard before wizard is a really fun game. You can play it with, I think up to six people and uh, down to three people. Anyway, we got through 12 rounds almost at the end. And then my kids got into a spat and basically threw their cards in and walked away. That's quitting. That's when things are tough and hard. You're just saying, forget it. I'm done. That is not what change is. That's like throwing in the towel when you have to make a good decision. But change is a deep evaluation of what's truly important. And that's what led to your retirement, really, is just like those mirrors being held up over and over. And finally, you're getting the red flag message from more people <laughs> saying, this is not Let's talk to that point for a moment because on numerous occasions on this journey, Kristen has been like, hello, hello, mirror in front of face. And I was just like, nope, nope, nope. And part of that's just, it was trying, like myself having to come to terms. And it, it took that one person to say that one word to help me make that shift. And, you know, even now, even having gone, going through this process, you know, the other day, Kristen held up a mirror and said, I finally am starting to see the light shine again. And that's being able to have somebody tell you that is just, it helps to know I'm moving in the right direction. Like it's a change in your voice. It's a change in your attitude. It's a change in the way you look at the world. And I feel freer right now than I ever had, than, not that I ever, but than I have in a long time. And so it feels really great. And it's not to say that I didn't enjoy Amazon. I've been on Amazon for almost nine years. Um, and I, it, it's been a, it's, it's been a journey. It's been full of change. It's full of a lot of learning. Same with mommy income. And I wouldn't change that journey for the world. I have learned so much. And that journey has what led me is, has what is what's leading me to what I do next. Because if I hadn't done all of that, it would have it, not saying I never would have found it, but it would have been a different journey that took me to find what it is. I really enjoy doing. Well, and it, it's one of those things where you come to something and you realize what you like and don't like. And how do you know if you don't actually try something and you don't actually try it for a period of time? Hello, eight, nine years is a long time to try something. And there's taken a lot of evolutions. And of course, you know, starting with retail arbitrage and moving into wholesale and bundles and all these things, there's all these transitions that each one brings a level of newness and excitement. But the reality is when you get to a point where you're just like, this is no longer for me. And maybe you guys have one of those personalities is similar to Amy's that literally is like every, it's like that seven year itch almost. It's like that point where it's like after a certain period of time, you have exhausted all your level of genius in this and realize this is just not for me anymore. And I've got to do something different. That is perfectly okay. This is your permission 
to explore that. This is not permission to quit because something gets hard and you don't know how to do it. That's, that's not what we're doing here. What we're doing here is giving you permission to make a change if, if you realize that something is no longer serving you. And that really de requires determination, determination to move through the difficult parts. Because guess what? An exit strategy in any business, any job, any relationship, any anything is really, really hard. Just that's just there's no sugarcoating it. There's lots of moving parts and pieces when it's involved in, in shutting down a business or transitioning to something else. So th there's that's going to be hard no matter what. You just got to choose which one's harder. And that going that's exactly pivoting off that choosing your hard because at, there was a point in going through this. I was like, I'll just keep doing this because it's easier than figuring out the exit strategy. It's easier than doing all the things and making the calls to vendors to tell them I'm leaving the Amazon game and all of those things that were hard to do. But each and every single time I did one, I felt freer each time. And so as that checklist, because I did, you know me, I create a spreadsheet with a checklist of all the things I need to do. And as I thought of new things, I added new things to that. And that allowed me to, as I started crossing things off, do that. Now, not every, like my Amazon business is, it has 1% of the things left to close it out fully. Um, and that's only because I can't close my business out until the end of 2020. There's a, you know, things like that, that I don't have the ability to do right now. And there's other things. Well, cause government offices, certain things aren't functioning the way they normally do right now. So it's kind of hard to do certain things. And so I'm waiting, but I'm at a point where I'm comfortable with where I'm at with it. Um, and I'm excited for the new. I was listening to Brene Brown's new podcast and she was, her first episode is so totally vulnerable because she's talking about FFT, which is effing first time and moving into something new. The perfectionist in me wants to ask Kristen. It's been like, I want to know how to do all the things before I jump into doing the new. That was another stuck point for me was I, before I got rid of the Amazon business, before I moved on, I wanted to know all the things and what I was going to do and all the parts and pieces. And I finally had to come to terms with, that's not what God has for you right now. You need to figure out how to close one door so another window can open and see where that leads you. And it's not been comfortable. It's been uncomfortable in a lot of ways, but it's also been really good. Um, perfectionism is not a great thing. And so I feel like the Lord's saying, nope, Move away from that. <laughs> you, I'm not, you'll get there when you need to know what you need to know. And as we grow and as we, you know, transition into different things, whatever that is, we, we're making transitions in life all the time. Whether it's in our actual business, closing our business, moving from a job, transitioning from having toddlers to school age children or from having high schoolers to grown children that live in your house. It, the dynamic is constantly changing in our lives. And to be able to know how to be strong and how to face some of these things, because guess what? If you've ever been a perfectionist and you have children, you can just throw all that out the window because children are so unpredictable that you can have all the best duckies in a row and then something will happen to be like, good luck with that. Um, so th the reality is, is that nothing's ever going to be exactly the way we want. And we have to take that leap of faith to get to the other side of something. We don't always get to see every single step in front of us. Sometimes it's just that one step in faith to move towards something and away from something else. Yeah, and it reminds me, I mean, I've gone through so many things. And this brings me back to my, my sister told me the other day when I was talking to her that my parents were concerned because they want, you know, your parents want you to succeed. They didn't know where I was going. They didn't, they, they felt that same angst that I was feeling. And my sister was like, you know what? Amy always lands on her feet. She's like a cat. Like I got laid off when I was six months pregnant. I got laid, laid off a time before that. Like, so, and each time layoffs, changing business models, I've landed on my feet. It's not always the most graceful landing, but I will get there. <laughs> Sometimes I smash my face into the ground in the process, but it's a process and I'm scrappy. That's why I'm built to be an entrepreneur because I'm willing to take risks. Mind you, they're not the same risks that Kristen takes because she's definitely more a uh, risk taker than I'm more risk averse, but I'm willing to take those risks and fall flat on my face and see where it takes me. So my, like the fact that it makes me feel really good to hear 
my sister, my with Kristen and other people in my life saying, you can do this. And this is why I believe you can gives me that encouragement to take, continue taking those little steps in faith and move it forward. Even though I really don't like FFTs, effing first times, because I feel like I'm walking into a whole minefield of them right now, but I'm embracing that and realizing that it may not be great the first time, it may not be great the second time, but each time I do it, it's better than it was the time before. You know, I've always said that practice doesn't make you perfect, practice makes you better. Well, and the thing we have to learn from that is that you have to actually practice to get better. And if you never take that first leap of faith and go into something that's completely unknown, listen, we have all walked into a room at some point in our lives full of a bunch of strangers and been completely intimidated. We have all walked into something that we did not know what the result was going to be. Have you ever had a really interesting test at the doctor where you're just like, okay, now you're walking on pins and needles wondering what the result will be. How about a pregnancy test, anyone? Have you ever looked at that going, I have no idea how if this is going to turn out the way you wanted it to, whether that was positive or negative, who knows, but we've all had those moments of unknowns, but we still had to take the test and then wait for the result. Sometimes we don't get the result right now. We just have to take the action. And so that's, you know, something that you've always been amazing at is just taking the action and taking the step. And sometimes you need that push off the cliff in order for you to take the action. And so, you know, those are just the things that we can, we can learn from these, these things. And, you know, we don't walk in faith without accountability. We still need people. We still need mentors. We still need BFFs. We still need coaches and people to come alongside and encourage and help and push you forward because left to ourselves, we'll probably watch a lot of really funny YouTube videos for a lot of hours and do a whole lot of nothing else. There may have been, and uh, you know, everybody has their own vice when they're going through things. My vice is honestly silly cat videos and really dumb reruns on YouTube. Like, I, that is my thing that I go back to. You know, I don't drink alcohol, I don't do any of that type of stuff, but I binge watch crappy television and cat videos. But it's, I realized at one point, I'm like, okay, why am I spending all of my time doing this? It's because I didn't want to deal with the yuck. I didn't want to deal with the way I was feeling. And so I was like, okay, let's get over that. And, and like Chris and I always talk about have the pity party, and I had the pity party, and then I moved on. And that's part of the process. Because honestly, it's pity parties are no fun. Like you're by yourself. Nobody's coming to your pity party but you. And then mm, there's no party. decorations. There's sometimes there's like tubs of, you know, ice cream or frosting out of a can or a whole bunch of Nutella, whatever it is. That is <laughs> Kristen is telling you all of the things that I have called her and said, I'm eating a tub of frosting right now. <laughs> Hey, me too. I'm like, wait, let me get my frosting. <laughs> Except for I want graham crackers or something with mine. I can't just eat straight up frosting, but. The reality is we have our pity party, we have our moment, and that's a let go moment. And then it's ripping it off like a Band-Aid. Like, there, it's not doing anybody any good to hang on to something for too long. Because then you just are, are constantly in that state of the yeah buts, the what ifs, the okay, well, this isn't going great, but I have no idea what I'm moving into next. That is where faith comes in. And you just have to know and follow the fact that what is it that you really want? Because that's what a transition is all about. What is it that's really, really important to you? And if you de define what's really important to you and your why and your purpose, following after that, it's a lot easier to let go of things that don't fit into that anymore. And an important thing to note there is making sure your why is your why and not somebody else's why. I fell into that trap and was trying to live somebody else's goals that weren't mine. And so I had to realize that and realize as I was looking at that, that the direction I was heading was not the direction that I wanted to be going in. Um, that happened. I actually cut my Amazon business in half. And then I realized, well, why did I just cut the whole darn thing? Because <laughs> that would have been better and easier for me. That would have been better for me. But I realized that reason I was in this for a longer time. It's, it's being able to make those steps. Um, I had to have all of those things lined up in a row to happen in the order in which they did. So I land where I am. And knowing your why is important. We've talked about that many times on this show. Um, I want to make sure that you are still living your why and your why can change. It doesn't have to be the same why forever. 
Um, my why has evolved. My why really evolved when I had kids. My why has evolved through different businesses and everything. So making sure that if you haven't sought, sat down and thought about your why in a while, spend some time with that thought. Am I still living the why that's driving me forward? Because that's what your why should do. If your why is not moving you forward, then you're chasing the wrong why. The, and knowing your, your reasons and purpose and why for doing the things you do. And number one, remembering that that changes and you should reevaluate that probably on a yearly basis and say, okay, is this still what I want to do? Is this still serving me? Is this still moving me towards that thing I want? And maybe, I mean, even during all of this crazy virus times and everything that we've been in and dealing with as a nation and a world, that that can abruptly change if something comes into your life. I remember at, at a time when my why changed because my father was sick with cancer and we knew he was terminal. My everything changed at that point. It was, I'm going to spend as much time with, I, with him as I can because I know he's not going to be with us forever. And so our why changed into um, purposefully doing things in business and in life to revolve around that as it is temporary. Just like everything in life is temporary. There's always, the only thing we can count on is constant change, whether it's our own health, whether it's our businesses, relationships should be changing on a regular basis for the better and all those types of things. So reevaluating what your purpose is is really important to know which path that you want to take. And sometimes you have to, you come to a fork in the road and you have to decide which one is the best for you. And guess what? This is perfectly normal and perfectly healthy to be able to do this on a regular basis. And you have full permission to explore this in your own life. And we encourage you to do so because your, your happiness, your contentment, your soul's purpose is at stake if you don't. And it doesn't matter where you are in life. We can all have different seasons. I didn't have to wait till I was 65 to retire. I actually learned that from my dad. My dad retired at the age of 21 to move in from working in corporate America to being his own boss. And so being able to see that we can all have different seasons, we can all make those shifts, but always going back to why am I making, wanting to make this change? Is it because it's just hard and I don't want to work through the hard? Or is it because this isn't the right fit for me anymore. Is it not really helping me with my why? Is that, is this all not fitting together? Um, you know, all of this has happened. It happened smack. Like my deadline for my retirement date was set for March 31st of 2020 for my Amazon business. And then the pandemic hit every, and so everything was already in line to make that happen. It allowed that to happen. It allowed the walking away from mommy income. It is allowing me to focus on what's important to me right now, which is trying to figure out how to school a 10 year old and a six year old. Um, I love teaching adults. Anyone who's been at a workshop with me knows that I love teaching adults. I'm struggling with two kids. Let me tell you, it's hard. I give Every one of you who's a teacher out there, thank you for doing what you do because I could not do what you do. Um, and so it's giving me that ability to focus where I need to focus right now without having to have all the other parts and pieces. Um, it's not, and you know, there's a part of me that's like, but it's not what I want to do, but uh, it's where I'm at right now and it's an okay place to be. I don't need to, I don't need to fill my world with all the things just to feel like I'm okay. It's okay to have some quiet in my life. Well, and it's okay to not know what the next step is going to be. It's okay to not know that you're done with something and you don't need to just jump into something else immediately. It's okay to have that time to sit and think and ponder and wonder what it is that you're really great at and what it is that you want to bring into the world, whether that's um, a product based business, whether that's service, whether it's deciding to, you know, Amy and I often joke, it's like our inside joke all the time of like, you know, we're, we're going, we're quitting this business and going to get a nine to five. We're telling everybody to quit their nine to fives. And they were like, Oh my gosh, this business stuff is so hard. Let's just go get a job at Panera. And like, you know, or be, you know, a Starbucks barista. And no, there's no, no, there's no shame in that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that like going from being business owner to just like punching into somebody's clock and just doing your job and coming home and not having a 24 hour a day kind of thing going on would kind of be a relief sometimes. But it would be like, a relief for us for the first two weeks. And then, and then like, we'd, 
<laughs> then we'd be going insane. Like that's reality. I think that like, and I don't think we're alone in that. It's sometimes it would just be easier to not have all the parts and pieces of running a business because there are a lot of elements to doing it. But that's as small business entrepreneurs, that's what we do. It's what we signed up for. And when that becomes not something you want to do, you have permission to move on to something else, whether that's moving on to doing something different or that's moving on to getting a nine to five, whatever it is for you. Like you have the permission to be able to make those changes. And I think, you know, it depends on personality. You know, I'm super into the Enneagram and I think it's really cool to really understand people's personalities and where they come from. And my husband's a six and he's like a loyalist and that is literally his personality. Um, this, this book right here is revolutionary. It's called The Road Back to You by Ian Cron. And if you want to learn more about the Enneagram, it's, this is something that uh, I have read last year and I've listened to and I've actually studied this stuff. Because it's so interesting to me to, to understand that. Helps you understand people. Helps understand the people around you. But like if you're a, if, you know, take the test, read the book, do whatever. Um, because I think, you know, you, you learn something about your personality. Go back to the, like the loyalist. Like my husband's a loyalist. And so regardless of circumstances or how miserable he might be at something, he has a really hard time not being loyal to people and jobs and all that. That's a great quality against great qualities. There's also an unhealthy state of this, of these qualities. And so when he gets to that point, that's where people get stuck and think, Oh, well, this is, you know, all the people I'll let down, or I can't walk away from this because all these things will fall apart or these people won't like me or appreciate me or they, you know, whatever you're thinking about all the parts and pieces to where it just keeps you loyal because you just feel like you owe it to yourself and to them to stay. When reality is that you're doing yourself a disservice by giving them the least of you because your heart's really not there anymore. It's interesting because I'm an Enneagram one. And when I read the chapter, well, actually listened to it while I was walking, it felt like I got gut punched. Um, it was like, wow, that was so real. It helped me have this perspective on myself. Um, it's actually helping me through this process to understand why I feel the way I feel about some of this and why some of the emotions are coming out the way that they are. It also gave me a really great talking point for my husband because he's ADD. So he's always giving me articles to read on this is how like I see the world as an ADD person and why I can't function the way you function and so now I'm able to give him this and say read this so I'm listening to my husband who's in up in our bedroom reading it going ha yep I'm like okay he gets it he's seeing the parallels between me and the Enneagram one and so it was it's eye-opening for me um, to, to have that piece of it. it it was kind of part of the piece of all this puzzle and honestly a big part of this was First, it was the light bulb moment of having an end date. The next piece of that was the plan. You know, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. The Enneagram one is a perfectionist. And so what does that look like? And my coach had me write it all down. He goes, okay, you wrote that down. You're missing pieces. Go back and look at it again in a couple of days. And so starting to keep adding to that and then being able to take steps forward. The reality is it's really hard to make change without a plan. It doesn't have to be a long, elaborate plan, but being able to um, shift, especially if it's a major business shift like I'm doing, having that plan so that you can execute what makes sense when. So I get to know when I need to work on the things I need to work on. What are the steps I need to do that Kristen and I need to talk about for me to make sure I can hand over the reins of everything that I've done in Mommy Income? Or it's letting go of parts and pieces of my Amazon business. So all of those were worked in but also making that transition from the old to the new. And I think that, that the balance there is what keeps the spark alive and keeps all of the emotions balanced. Because as you're moving into, it's not just moving away from, it's moving away from and moving into, moving something that's not serving you into something that excites you and seeing the be able to do the both and at the same time gives that balance between you know, there always is a grieving process when you leave something behind, no matter how big or small, there's always a grieving process. Even if you were like, I mean, people have been divorced and broken up and things like that. Like there's, um, whether it's a great change because you're like good riddance or it's just, uh, things aren't working out. Like there's still this process of letting go of something and moving into something else. And I think shifting that focus on doing what you need to do with your exit strategy and your plan and your, you know, things like that. But then also like, okay, 
what can I do on this side that does encourage and excite me and move me in the direction that I'm planning to go in. And that's interesting because that was actually one of the hardest steps for me to make was I spent too much time working on the leaving and I had to start embracing the moving forward. And it's like, cause two weeks ago I sat down with my coach and I wasn't willing to embrace the moving into that's designed and create a website. Um, I wasn't ready to take this up. He goes, okay. I said, okay. He's like, you need to do a part of it. What part do you want to do? I'm like, I will do the above the fold part. I will get that done because I wasn't, it was, it was a stretch for me to, to see what came next. And two weeks later I ended up with a full website. Well, a four page website, but it's still a website. It was not just above the fold. It took me some time to embrace that, but now I get to find the balance between moving away from and moving into and embracing both embracing the process of the transition. Um, transition has always had a negative connotation in my brain for whatever reason. And in reality, it's actually a really good thing, which I find totally fascinating. I just making a parallel. My son really struggles with, par- with transitions. He's on the spectrum. And so transition is really hard for him. And I'm like, well, mom still has trouble with transition too. Just not quite on the minute detail level that he does. Um, so transition's hard for most people. And so being able to find that, that place where you can, merge the two, you know, it's, it's like when we started bundling, we didn't jump into it. We did it bit by bit by bit. And all of a sudden our Amazon businesses became 100% bundles and start there. And this is the same thing with this. It's not, I didn't go, I didn't go zero to 60 in a new business. I went, okay, bit by bit by bit working over to this. Honestly, that is really how everything needs to be in life is like just small steps. You know, it doesn't have to be overnight. Somebody wrote a book on that. Maybe somebody wrote a book on that. Um, so Dream big, step small. You can find it on Amazon by Kristen Ostrander. This is my like crazy marked up copy. You know, this is like, I, I, I'm not kidding you. It's kind of really weird and odd that like this was the, the not for resale, like, you know, author's pre-copy. And it's so marked up. Why? I mean, it seems cheesy, but like, I reread this often because like my, I, for some reason, my own words just like jump out at me. It's kind of like a mirror and like, oh, I said that and I'm not doing that right now. And I need to be doing that right now. And I need to be talking about that. The funny thing about that though, it really is in any transformation that you make, any transition, it's the small steps. It's the same thing you say to Taylor when he's struggling with the minute details. We need to rethink what we're doing, at whether whatever changes we're making in life on a smaller scale. You know, life and society right now shows a lot of result, but not a lot of process. And the reality is that we spend the majority of our time working on the journey and the process. And then the little tiny result that you see at the top is the result of years and years of transformation and changing and everything else. And that's all transition really is. Transition doesn't mean a stop and a burial and a putting to death of something. It's just a movement into something else. And so embracing that like one step, like your coach said, you know, do one thing on your website and you're like, okay, but you, once you had that clarity, you jump headlong into it. But in order to get that clarity, there were some things that needed to be taken care of. And so those are the kinds of things, one step at a time. If you can do one thing today to make a change into something else, what is that one thing? Sometimes it's just writing down all the things you hate about the current situation. That's step one. Great. Then the second one is, okay, what's one of these things that I can change right now? So so if that's the place that you are, we just want to encourage you with this, that you have permission to make a change and make a transition and retire from, you know, honestly, you can't really retire from motherhood. So we hope you're not trying to retire from that. Good luck. I've tried. There are some days. I've tried three or four times this week to retire from that. And it wasn't, no one's accepting my resignation. So (laughs) unfortunately I'm stuck with that for now. I mean, sometimes we we could do a whole episode about that whole thing. But like, really, what is one thing that's frustrating me in my current situation with my parenting? And what's that one step I can take to move into a change that's positive for everyone? So even in the small details like that, there's always a way to make a good and positive change and transition into something that's no longer away from something that's no longer serving you. And this whole process, all all of it comes down to It's hard. There were challenges, but on the other side of that, this is the always been the hard part for me is you go through these difficult times and what you come out on the other side is so much better than where you were 
I'm not there yet. I'm working towards that, but I already feel freer than I have in a long time because I'm moving into something that is what over the past 10 years I've learned is what I really like to do. And it's embracing who I am more so than I ever have. And that's exciting. It's hard because we've built something amazing together. But at the same point, like this is, this is better on all things for both of us. And we, that we don't get to like, this doesn't mean that it erases everything we did. It's another thing I had to come to terms with is just because you're moving on doesn't mean it erases everything you've done. Like it's still there. It still lives. It still breathes. You did all that, but you can move on from it and move into your new season. And it's, it's like, uh, it's like climbing a mountain, you know, like all the steps that you took to get to the top aren't erased just because you're there. They're part of the journey. They're part of you learning what you like and you don't like, you know, so I'm, I'm one of those people that like visually and experientially, like I have to do it or, or be, or see it in order to say yes or no. So this kitchen renovation project that we're doing, <clears throat> excuse me. It drives my husband crazy sometimes because I'm such a visual person and I'm like, look, he tries to strive to, to strive things and do work with his hands and say, it looks like this and this. And I'm like, draw me a picture, make it out of Legos, like whatever it is you need to do. This is serious stuff, people. Like if I can't see it, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. And so that's, this has been a thing in our kitchen res- renovation of like, I can't see it. So I don't know. I need like a whole virtual 3D thing. There's a reason why you brought somebody in to show you what the kitchen was going to look like. Because when they built the bar in their basement, Chris and legit made Ben take cardboard boxes and build it out so she could see what the heck he was talking about. I'm serious. Like, this is just how I function. I I have to be able to see things to know whether it's going to, like, work out or not. Because I don't want to commit to it unless I know this is kind of what I'm going to love it. And so those are the types of things that you have to think about how you, how you learn, how you know, and you know, if you can't see it, you can't visualize it. It's just part of, part of the journey and the process that we go through. It doesn't erase all the things that, you know, that that's part of who you are. It's part of the process of changing and evolving. I mean, I didn't know that I was good at what I'm good at until I tried it. And that's the whole thing is that Every day is an experiment. Every day of life, every business, every adventure that you do is just a part of what you're trying to do in life. What kind of mark do you want to leave on this world? And it sometimes it takes doing to understand what you really are good at and what you're not good at. And it's really okay to not be good at everything because guess what? Here's your truth moment. You are not going to be great at everything you do and try. This You don't get participation trophies in life. No one's going to pat you on the back for trying this and that. It's not going to happen. You're not going to be great at everything. You can work and work and work and work really hard, but you still aren't going to be the greatest at every single thing that you do. And I'm not saying that to like discourage anyone. I'm saying that to be like, there are things you're going to be great at. There are things that Amy is absolutely a genius at. And those are the things that are encouraging her and why she's moving into something different because it was wasting her talent and wasting her level of genius on something that just wasn't allowing her to shine the best way that she could shine. And that to me would be more devastating than anything else is to see somebody hide their potential under a bushel basket because this other thing was under a cart, a pile of cardboard and packing tape. Exactly. Amy is no longer hiding all of her talents in cardboard and packing tape. She's (laughs) moving on to something that's greater and better. And I think it just takes time to discover those things and realize that like, I'm not going to be great at everything or I just don't like a product based business. Great. There are so many other businesses out there for you. If that's not something you like. Right. And the reality is like, you can like it for a time. It can work in the season of your life for a time. It may not be that way forever. And a product-based business for me fit for a season. It's not what fits now. And I'm excited for that. And who knows, I might be in this for three years, 10 years, two years. I have no idea, but I'm going to go into it and embrace it and move forward. I'm excited for the journey that's ahead of me. It took me a while to get to that exciting point because I had to go through all the emotional piece of it, the grieving. And that's part of the process. The grieving process isn't over yet, but it's moving along and being able to embrace that has been a positive for me. Cause we all think of grief as negative. And in, in many cases it's hard to do, but 
it's moving you emotionally through the letting go. And so hold up my rock. For those of you on the podcast, you can't see this. I have a rock that I wrote back in November that says let go. This is my, well, it's a phrase. It's not a word for the year, but that was my thing. I didn't realize how early on in the year I was going to be letting go of all the things at that point. Um, but it opens up an entire three quarters of a year to move into something new. And by doing what was really hard, which was letting go, I'm able to feel better about the future, to see what the potential is. When you're stuck in that where you are and you don't feel great about it, it's a J-O-B and all of that stuff, it's hard to see the light. And by letting go of it, it all of a sudden that, that faith of letting go opens up and allows you to see a lot more clearly. Absolutely. That is, that is the number one thing to remember is that the natural things are grieving and fear and worry and unknown. That is just the reality of transitioning into something new. There's no way that we're not even allowed to see every single thing. We don't get to see the future. We only get to see uh, the potential and then moving forward into taking the right steps that are right for us. And we're going to get rejection and we're going to get no's and we're going to get failures and we're going to get falling on our faces and flops, just like we have all throughout our journey for any other business. But the reality is that uh, every day, if you get up and say, this is what I'd like and want to be doing, regardless of how difficult it is, regardless of whether or not you're you're feeling successful every day. You know, that entrepreneur thing is all up and down. It's always a roller coaster. One day we're like, yes. The other day we're like, I'm failing. Like, it's just that that's the way it's going to go. And so as you embrace that and move forward, um, you know, I, I just, it's hard to do this episode because you and I are still talking every single day and we're still encouraging each other. And I'm still, you know, waiting to hear about your business, but why don't you let everybody know what you're moving into and where they can find you going forward? Well, I am, one of the things I've loved about my journey with, in Mommy Income specifically, <clears throat> I did it some within my Amazon business, but I was the, sounds really weird to say that, the back-end manager. I did all the automation. I made all of the softwares work together. I did all of those things. So in reality, what I love is systems and processes. And we all know, if you've listened to this podcast at all, Krista doesn't love when I use those terms. So what I'm basically moving into is, Helping small business entrepreneurs, just like each one of you, create a better flow in your business so you are being more efficient with how you use your time. And we all know that time is money. So if you can use your time more efficiently, you can make more money because you're doing things in less time. Um, you can find out more about what I'm doing at, mo at mommyincome.com. I'm so stuck in my brain of what I've done for so long. I can't get the new okay, business. Let's try that again with your new website. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go to workflowimpact.com, if you do uh, go there, you can find out what I'm doing. If you go to workflowimpact.com slash mommyincome, um, I've got some information for you about working through with your businesses as well. I'm excited because systems and processes, as Kristen, it's what lights my fire. I get so excited. There were so many times in our mommy income journey where she'd go, can we do this? Is this even a thing? Is this possible? And I'd say, yes. I did learn to stop explaining to her the, all the nauseam how it worked because she just glazed over at me. I just realized I needed to say yes and then do it. But that's the part I love doing. It's being able to figure out how things work together, to find the holes in your business, to be able to make more doing less is really what it comes down to in a simple form. So workflowimpact.com is where you can find out more about what I'm doing. It's where you can connect with me. Um, I look forward to helping, continuing to help. Um, it's one of the things I've loved about being part of Mommy Income is having a community, being part of that and helping watch students grow. So workflowimpact.com is where you can find Amy's wonderful level of genius so that she can help serve you. Or if you know of somebody that's kind of doing an entrepreneur business and they're stuck, everybody's stuck, you guys, in some form or another. And like just in her terms, I'm going to put it in my like non-techie layman's terms is like how to connect things to make them work better. So she's always, she's got project management skills. She's got so many skills that she can bring to the table that show people how to manage, pro not just manage pro processes, but create new things to help your workflow be more efficient. Because we've said it from the beginning, time is money. And if you're wasting time, you're wasting money. And neither one of us want to waste any of that. So making sure that you, you have a workflow that 
creates space for you to do what you're really good at and not get caught up in all the details of how all the things work together. Let somebody else do that for you. That person is Amy because she knows how all the things talk to each other and make them all work together. And it's just a great thing. And so just making sure, again, this is just your encouragement to do something you love. And it's so exciting for me to be able to see Amy doing the things that she loves doing and for the masses and not just for mommy income, which is great, but doing it for more and more people are going to be impacted by your level of genius because you get to go out into the world with it. So we're no longer hogging all of your greatness. We're going to share it with everybody. Um, well, I appreciate that. And I appreciate the fact that, I mean, over the past and the reality is we've, Chris and I have known each other for five years, not a five plus a little, whatever it is. Um, in the five years, like you have, the journey that we've gone on together has helped open my eyes to what I'm good at, to being able to do it in our business together, but also to be able to really embrace it. Um, having you constantly hold the mirror up in front of me and saying, this is when you shine and being able to do that. So thank you for allowing me to be on this journey with you. And I look forward to seeing how you grow and change and evolve in your own transition as we go through this process. Awesome. Well, thanks you guys for joining us. We know that this is crazy big news, but we're both here for you again, workflowimpact.com to be able to connect with Amy further after this. And we'll see you same time, same place on the Amazon files next week.